Dr. Ravinder Chetal, pediatrician, practice in Bandra for the last 35 years. My area of interest is neonatology and pediatric nutrition. I'll be talking to you today something about infant and growing up children's nutrition. Obviously, the best nutrition for the baby is ready-made for the mother. And the breast milk is the best milk for the baby. It is recommended that breastfeeding should start as early as possible, possibly on the day one itself. Every animal is endowed with the mother's milk and it starts lactating immediately after the baby is born. The milk is a process, it's not a switch on, it's not that it starts flowing immediately after the baby is born. And that's why sometimes it takes a while for the breast milk to be adequate. Breast milk is not only for nutrition, but it's also for hydration. And there are babies who do not latch on well. In the bargain, they get dehydrated and get hypoglycemic because of inadequate nutrition. That's why it makes sense to introduce a little bit of formula feed alongside the breast milk till such time that breast milk is fully on. So it's good to introduce baby a little bit of formula feed, but do not confuse the baby by offering the milk with the bottle. But remember, offer the formula feed with the vati and spoon so the baby doesn't lose the habit of breastfeeding. Once you offer the bottle, it's the end of breast milk story because the baby always takes an easy option. Like once you know the elevator, you don't look at the staircase. And we will obviously offer the bottle, not knowing the advantage of breast milk by itself. Like we said initially, those babies who don't get adequate breast milk must be given supplementary feed with the formula feed. Formula feed is modified dried cow's milk. The raw unprocessed cow's milk cannot be introduced in the diet till the baby is 6 months of age. Cow's milk which is called the two types and it's called a pasteurized cow's milk which is available to you every day in a plastic bag versus a homogenized milk which is available as a tetra pack. Now pasteurized milk can be introduced at the age of 6 months and the homogenized milk has to be introduced not early than one year. There's a myth about introducing sugar in child's life early in life. The myth is about not introducing refined sugar. The sugar which is refined, which is available in chocolates and brownies and pastries and cupcakes. And that sugar is called refined sugar. It gets absorbed immediately at a very high glycemic index. And that's the one which has a danger of causing obesity later on. Ghar ki chini or ghar ka gur jo hai, which is, has a low glycemic index and can be added to the milk. The reason to add sugar to the milk is because breast milk has 7% sugar in the form of lactose. Cow's milk or any other bovine milk has about 35 to 3.8% sugar. So adding sugar is not only for taste, adding sugar is for making up that much of less sugar which is already there in the milk. And the amount of sugar is about 1 teaspoon to 100 ml of milk. And boil it after adding sugar because sugar is not sterile. So you have to sterilize the milk after adding sugar and then feed with spoon. Milk is not a substitute for food. As the baby grows up, baby requires what is known as calorie dense food in the form of semi-solid to solid and it, the change of consistency from pasty to grainy to lumpy to hard is an automatic process. So milk cannot substitute this diet. Now milk empties from the stomach every two hours and that's why the baby needs to be diligently fed every three hours. Non-milk diet empties the stomach a little later, about four hours. That's why baby has a longer interval to feed. As the stomach capacity increases, baby can take a bigger feed and have a bigger interval. So it becomes so convenient for the mother and well as for the baby and allows the baby to catch sleeping hours also. The mother sometimes complains that the baby doesn't get up to feed at night at all. And that's almost automatic. The need to sleep at night is necessary not only because the baby is not hungry, but it is because the baby's brain secretes a hormone called growth hormone, which in 2 and 8 a.m. And babies grow linearly in the night. The getting of the baby to feed every three hours diligently, meaning thereby interrupted sleep, will cause interrupted growth. Babies who sleep long hours at night, after three months, they grow well. So by introducing calorie dense food during the daytime allows the baby to sleep longer hours at night and that becomes convenient as well as for good physiological growth of baby. The foods mean carbohydrates, fats and then proteins. You start with carbohydrates then add fat and then the proteins. This also goes parallel with the baby's activity and the baby's ability to digest different kind of foods. The baby start drooling a lot of saliva at around 4 months of age, indicating the ability to digest carbohydrates. So that's the best time to introduce a little kind of pasty food like pureed rice, dal, vegetables or pureed fruit, which the baby digests very well and is happy to sleep for 3 to 4 hours post the feed. Around 5 months of age, babies learn the ability to swallow. There's a difference between gulping 
and swallowing. Swallowing starts from the front of the mouth. Like the baby brings out a lot of curdled milk and tries to swallow it. Baby is teaching itself the art of swallowing. That's the time to start a baby little bit of grainy food like an upma or a shira or a ragi or a idli or bread soaked in milk or chapati soaked in milk. These are grainy cereals which the baby learns the art of swallowing. Now swallowing happens from the front of the mouth that's why feeding with the spoon does not help. A spoon puts the food in the back of the mouth and baby tends to kind of choke or gasp while taking this grainy food. So the best thing is to feed with fingers or even feed with a fork from the front of the mouth, baby learns the art of swallowing. Come six months, the baby starts bouncing and bouncing requires a lot of energy to be released. And that's why a fatty food is to be introduced. Like introducing homemade white butter or a ghee is best. What is bad is trans fat, the yellow fat. The fat which remains solid at room temperature, the one which is commercially available is bad fat. Homemade ghee, homemade butter is soft at room temperature, it needs to be refrigerated. That's a good fat and that can be introduced a little bit at six months. How much fat? One teaspoon in a whole day in the form of fat, oil or butter. When the baby is seven months, baby learns to sit from a horizontal to vertical position. Baby learns to stand with support, support the weight on his own legs, tries to climb on your body. Now this requires large muscles. Muscle comes from proteins. So introduction of protein comes around seven months of age. Now we have a choice of non-vegetarian versus vegetarian proteins. Non-vegetarian proteins in essentially in the form of white meat like egg, fish and chicken. Egg white or fish or chicken. Different ways of making it make it maybe mulch because baby is just about beginning the teething. Baby cannot chew much. So baby has to be pureed, mashed, you know, food in the form of either egg buji or you know mashed. Uh, chicken or even soft boiled fish. So the transition of food is almost automatic from carbohydrates to fats to proteins. There are people who are strict vegetarians and they have a choice of not giving the non-vegetarian food but they can introduce a little bit of soy. Soy can be introduced in the baby's diet after six months. Introduction of soy below six months not recommended and after six months baby can introduce soy in the form of soy milk, it is available as soy chunks or is available as soy atta. So soy atta can make rotis in the proportion of 1 is to 2 mixed with wheat atta. And it does not deprive the vegetarians of any other protein that the non-vegetarians can boast of. Make the place of eating also more interesting for the child. For example, child as a member of the family should eat with the family. As you having a high chair next to your dining table, place the food in front of the child, make him make a mess of the table. But that's how he introduces that food is a ritual. It's a part of the family activity and then you find it more interesting. Putting the child in front of a video, putting the child in front of a television, the child just simply opens the mouth and putting food down the baby's gullet is not the way to teach the art of eating. Food eating is an art as well as science. Science takes up the nutrition. Art is the way how to feed the baby. And make the child sit next to you. Make the child sit to the elder brother and see how well the child will eat with you. Child has a typical uh, you know, predictable behavior as well as food goes. Initially, they have what is known as neophobia. Introduce any new food, they'll just spit it out immediately. And remember, food means different tastes, different textures, different temperatures and different flavors. And introducing each item to make the child food interesting becomes a little task for the mother. Post eight to nine months, child does the exactly what they want something new all the time. So this switch from neophobia to neophilia becomes the mother's task so much difficult. And they want something new all the time after six and seven months. They want to have a new plate, they want to have a new place. Sometimes the mother lands up feeding the baby in the kitchen, sometimes in the balcony, sometimes in front of the television. So that's how the children want to eat. Now unfortunately, man animal is the only animal which fights food. Once they grow up into one year and beyond, they just fight food. Other animals, they fight for food. Human animal fights food. There are so many things they want interesting. They want to jump, they want to explore the space. Food only becomes an irritant to them. But food is a part of important part of nutrition and nurture. So it is important to make the food interesting. They want to eat the food that we eat. In fact, even a small baby watching us eating food, drool saliva, wanting to put that in the mouth. And unfortunately, for some reason, the babies are offered food which looks so boring. It's unique colored and a unique temperature. With the child doesn't want interesting. Child wants bhojan, meal. Meal comprises of different components of food. There is a rice, there is a dal, there is a yogurt, there is a little tomato ketchup, there is a little of soup, there is a little water. Each morsel should taste different. This is how a picky child can be made interested in food. The kind of food we eat. And that's why when you introduce a child different flavors, 
Squeeze a bit of lemon in that dal chawal, the child find it interesting. Sprinkle a bit of chaat masala on the dahi, the child find it more interesting. Change the temperature, like dal chawal is warm, yogurt is cool. Make the milkshake, keep it in the fridge and take it out and give it to the baby. A thick, sweet, thickened milk, baby finds it very interesting. So this is how to make the food more interesting. And many mothers, I mean almost all mothers know the baby well. I can only give a guideline but I can believe me, mothers do an excellent job taking the baby into having food the way they want to have. When the baby is born, baby is recommended certain vitamins and minerals basically because the milk may not be an adequate source of vitamins and minerals. Multivitamins are not necessary. What the baby needs on a breastfed baby or even a formula fed baby or a mixed fed baby is a lot of vitamin D. Baby requires about 400 units of vitamin D per day till the child learns to be exposed to sunlight which is around one year of age. So it's mandatory that every child below one year should require vitamin D. Along with that, if the baby is breastfed baby, baby requires calcium. The formula fed baby may not require calcium because the formula are supplemented with calcium already. So a breastfed baby requires vitamin D and calcium and post three months of age, baby requires iron till the age of one year. Alongside this, as the foods get introduced, we are going to introduce vegetable soups and dal soup and mashed green vegetables, some amount of iron will be supplemented. Some amount of calcium will come from the milk and milk formulations, but vitamin D is to be given till the age of one year. After one year of age, as the child becomes more in a, a structured kind of a food pattern like we do, child did not be supplemented with multivitamins or calcium and iron. When you're talking about three meals a day at seven months, it is breakfast, lunch and dinner. When you miss four meals a day at night, at nine months, it is breakfast, lunch, snack and a dinner. So snack becomes a good bridge between the lunch and the dinner when there's a long gap. You have a lunch at one o'clock, you have a dinner at about seven o'clock in the evening. 4.35 o'clock is a good time for having introduced a snack. Snack is like fun food, like sitting in the balcony, watching the sun, watching the birdies. You can have a little bit of yogurt, you can have a little kurmura, you can have a little badam, you can have a little bit of fruit. Uh, I had been for a conference in US few years back and one gentleman in US presented a paper and his, his thesis topic was consumption of fruits and vegetables in American preschool children. They went from school to school, asked children to name one vegetable. The results were 75% said french fries. So that's the children's idea about fruits or vegetables. We need to introduce colored fruits, colored vegetables. And why colored? Because they have a lot of antioxidants. Inhibit this effect called oxidating radicals of oxygen, we need antioxidants. Like our ancestors used to live in Himalayas, they used to have no clothes on the body, they used to live 100 years, climb 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet. They used to have a small berry called karwan. The karwan is loaded with antioxidants. So is papaya, so is tomato, so is carrot, so is strawberry, so is mango. So all colored fruits are loaded with antioxidants. We need to introduce colored fruits. It may not be in the form of a fruit pulp, but maybe as a part of a smoothie. You can mix it with yogurt, keep it in the fridge, a chilled smoothie, they'll love to eat. So introduce fruit in the form of a smoothie or a pulpy fruit is a very good way of introducing antioxidants. And we need antioxidants basically for our eyes, our brain and alive and healthy for a long, long time. What many mothers feel that introducing fruit in the form of ready-made fruit juices is a good idea. It's not. Some of them do say we don't have added sugars or added flavors. But remember it is refined sugar. It is refined. And when I say refined sugar, it has a high glycemic index. It gets absorbed very fast. When it gets absorbed very fast, the body starts secreting insulin to bring the sugar down. When the sugar comes down, you want to eat more. So you want to binge on it. You can't stop at half a glass. You need to have a full glass and that leads to obesity. So the bottom line is introduce fruit in the child's diet. But having a whole fruit in the form of a pulp or a smoothie is always a better way of consuming fruit rather than having fruit juices. It's considered healthy to be to be born big or stay big and every mother wise with the next the neighbor's child to make the, her child put on a lot of weight. Now weight is a way of good way of assessing the growth and we as a pediatrician we keep on checking the baby's weight every time and the mother eagerly weighs because her perform her performance depends upon how will the babies put on weight but weight is not the only criteria for growth remember we need to have the child's activity match the child's weight gain and the child consumes too much of calories is not very physically very active the child can become land up in the problem of overweight overweight can lead to another problem called obesity and obesity can lead to many many more problems later on in life 
There are two groups of children who naturally tend to put on weight. One is a baby who was born very large, like in front of a diabetic mother. They were fed so well in the uterus, they want to be feeding well again outside the uterus. And they keep on putting on weight. The second group of babies are babies who are born very small, babies close to 2 kilos or less than 2 kilos, so called IUGR, intrauterine growth retardation babies. They tend to put on weight very fast when they are, born, when they are brought outside in this world. But these babies also tend to become overweight and then become obese later on. So we always warn the parents of these two groups of babies who are very large or very small at birth that they might become obese later on. And obesity brings in blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, bone problems and whole lot of problems in female children they can have a PCOD and menstrual problem later on. All this is related to rapidity of weight gain. Now what makes on put on weight is not just the amount of food but the kind of calories you consume. For example I have been saying about the refined sugar and trans fat. Refined sugar leads to rapid absorption of sugar causing insulin to rise. This insulin makes the sugar down but even if the sugar comes down, the insulin keeps on rising, bring the sugar further down and you want to binge more, you want to eat more. So these are the group of children who feel hungry immediately after the meals. They want to have something immediately after, some snack or something, they open the fridge and want to eat something else. So these are the children who become obese. Secondly, trans fat, fat which remains solid at room temperature, which did not be refrigerated. The market sold fats, butter or cheese are bad fats. They get deposited in the midriff and again the coronaries. So that leads to obesity and obesity related problems. What is good and what is necessary is the white butter, the homemade white butter, the white cheese made from cow's milk is safe cheese, again within limits. Secondly, the child's activities. Hardly a child has a place or a time or an area to play and they become couch potatoes, watching television, watching videos and watching tabs and no physical activity and that leads to obesity. So this is the new epidemic of illness that we see, the so-called malnutrition. We used to have malnutrition, lack of calories. Now we have malnutrition because children are taken to the mall, go to the food courts, there's a whole lot of calorie dense food and no, no activities. And that's what leading to a malnutrition related obesity. So we have to be very, very wary of this situation. And we have an explosion of this and we have to be very careful. Unfortunately, Food is taken as a reward and running is taken as a punishment. If a child does something wrong, he is asked to go around the ground 10 times and if he does something well, he is given a prize as a food or a cake or a pastry. That exactly gives the whole wrong signal. So we have to set a good example for our children and start with yourself first. It was a nice sharing my thoughts with you and I hope it is of uh, some great help to you. And if you have any queries, you can reach out to me on the address given below and I'll be very happy to solve your questions. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.